I thought after re-uploading my Misty Mountains Peter Van Lyshout one yesterday that I would just check and make sure that I've got all the ones that they've got censored. And I found all the ones that are highlighted in red, they've actually censored, I haven't picked up and re-uploaded, which I will be doing. Those five that I haven't is Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin, How and When the Bromance Started. Mark McMurtry confirms NCV Enterprises Phoenix, 3222 Kyogle, Vincent's Call, All Interested Parties. The big picture of The Village and the little picture of Mount Burrell Commercial. And the dick of the week, Benyini Nyinini returns, gonna be a gutty baddie, Mark McMurky. Updates of details of offence, 3222's water catchment reserve concerns and Mount Burrell Commercial. Now, I'm actually going to leave a list of all these videos that have been censored in the description. I feel it's pertinent to actually understand what they don't want people to know. They don't want people to know who NCV is, uh, the connection between Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin, that NCV Enterprises, Phoenix, uh, Kyogle, 3222 Kyogle Road, and all these other things that are pertinent to NICAP on Minjimbal's development. Now, I'll draw your attention to this quote from Derek Zillman down the bottom, from NCV Enterprises, dated the 20th of November. Finally, the community has engaged third-party contractors to assist in the removal of damaging online content affecting both the community's brand and vision. This approach is both more cost-effective and time-efficient than engaging in further legal action. If, however, legal action is required, the community is committed to that course. Significant progress has been achieved and we will continue to do our utmost to ensure that the community is protected against all unlawful attacks. So. What he's claiming there is that my 16 videos are unlawful attacks. Now, the thing being, Mr. Zillman, that if you are claiming them to be unlawful attacks, what law have I broken? You do not even have a judgment, a court order, nothing against me. And yet, the claim that you're putting in to actually get these videos removed is making a false claim of your own, stating that my videos are in breach of an injunction and a judgment against Gillian Norman. We have nothing to do with one another. Nothing. You cannot put her judgment on me. And here we've got your own quotes, and I do have the documentation for this, that it was very deliberate that you go about and you do all this, removing all the videos that affect your community brand and vision. Well, you see, your community only exists of a handful of people. The rest of the world is millions, and they have a right to know the truth. They have a right to know the unlawful activities that have been going on at Nightcap on Minjimbal and its birthing at Bulla Bulla community. And if you want to keep continuing to delete my videos under false claims, this is what I'm calling for now. Anybody out there that would like to take on this case against NCV Enterprises for the removal of my 16 videos, please contact me. On the standard that they are applied to my videos at $250,000 a video they want to get for my unproven defamation. There's 16 videos here at $250,000 a pop. That's $4 million. So I think it's time to actually make them prove that these are unlawful attacks, prove that there is a defamation complaint, prove that I have breached anything. And if and when you can actually do that, you would have had the valid right 
to actually censor my videos and make the claims that you have. However, in what you've done with my videos is made a false claim of your own. You are trying to apply Gillian Norman's judgment and injunction to me. Highly illegal. And as we can see from your quote, it was deliberate and intentful, and now you have done it with 16 videos. You don't want us to know about Peter Van Lyshout being the majority landowner and that Nightcap on Minimble own bugger all of the land that they've been selling interests in. You even removed my video on you removing four of my videos during your, night, um, your DA open public period. You removed twice the ones on the Tweedshire Council removing rural land sharing communities and also a detailed look at the issues in your DA. You also didn't like the idea of bringing up your capital expenditure fudging. Any idiot, even your first grader in accounting school or whatever, could pick how you have botched up and fudged your capital expenditure and your civil costings. Who is NCV Enterprise? Who is Billy Fitzgerald acting for? Again, why would you even want to hide that? My answer to Billy Fitzgerald, they deleted that too. It is interesting, out of all the things that they've deleted, what they're trying to conceal people knowing. These are not unlawful attacks, Derek Zillman. This is called freedom of speech. And you at Nightcap on Minjimbal have got a damn nerve in telling people to escape the matrix and get freedom so that they can be ruled under a dictatorship where having freedom of speech is called an unlawful attack. So I'm going for an attack on you now, not an unlawful one, a lawful one. Anyone out there that wants to help me get started a an action against uh, NCV Enterprises for the false uh, claims that they've made against these 16 videos. Let's go for 250000 uh, a video. That's a $4 million suit that I would like to take against these people. So anyone out there that would like to pitch in for that and give a helping hand, uh, that might even be enough to buy back uh, 3222 and the commercial and have some spare to actually rebuild and help start things over again. So I think it would be a good local community project to actually take on Derek Zillman and NCV Enterprises for all the frustrations that they've made under false claims of unlawful attacks. They are not unlawful. And if they are, Mr Zillman, first you've got to prove that they're unlawful then you can claim, oh look, here's a judgment against me saying they are unlawful, remove your videos, there you go. That makes what you're claiming true. I am not Gillian Norman. I have not got a judgment against me. I have not got an injunction against me. And all you have done is interfere with my free speech. Let me just take you through them. The first two about uh, Adrian Brennock being a bankrupt and, well, which ones were they? Nightcap on Minjimbal developer bankrupt Adrian Brennock, a.k.a. AB and Andrew Brennan. And Dick of the Year, Adrian Brennock, bankrupt developer of 36 million project for his email response. Neither of those actually show up down here, but as you can see, defamation complaint defamation complaint. Update on details of offence, 3222's water catchment reserve concerns and Mount Burrell commercial defamation complaint. Dick of the week, Benyini Nyanini returns, Bonambia Gutty Batty, Mark McMurky, defamation complaint. The big picture of the village and the little picture of Mount Burrell commercial, defamation complaint. One of my skills is fucking people over, Adrian Brennock, A.B. Brennock. 
uh, the sales pitch versus reality to be continued, defamation complaint. Given that I'm a predatory cunt and I use that as a term of endearment, Adrian Brennock, defamation complaint. Now I might point out that you can't actually claim defamation where it's him saying it, I'm not saying it, he's saying it. So if there was to be a defamation complaint, it would actually be against Adrian Brennock, not me. Mark McMurtry confirms NCV Enterprises Phoenix 3222 Kyogle. Vincent's call all interested parties. Again, defamation complaint. Oh, this one, I can't tell you what. I don't know why some of them don't come up. Hang on, I'll find out which one that is. Uh, that looks like uh, Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin, how and when the bromance started. Again, defamation complaint. Oops, missed that one too. Let's go back. Uh, answer to Billy Fitzgerald of Rosalie's litigation, cease and desist on NCV Enterprises. Well, I think we found out how well that one works, Billy, didn't we? Uh, who is NCV Enterprises and who is Billy Fitzgerald acting for? Again, defamation complaint. <laughs> now this one, Tweed Shire Council's proposal to remove rural land sharing communities a more detailed look at the issues with Nightcaps DA 21-0010. This was removed twice. This is how sensitive they find this information. This is the only video that they've actually removed twice. So I want people to pay special attention to what's in the video that I've re-uploaded of this one. Because everything that's in these is what they don't want people to know. And by that, I would like people to upload, share, and just basically get it out there as much as you possibly can. Because if they don't want people to know it, that's a truth that n people need to hear. The death song of Kunga, fudging capital expenditure and other misrepresentations in DA 21-0010, defamation complaint. Tweed Council again, defamation complaint. The four videos removed by Nightcap on Minjimble developers during the public submission period of DA 21-0010, defamation complaint. Misty Mountains, Peter Van Leishout, Majority Landowner, DA 21-0010 and Intro to the Uncensored series, defamation complaint again. Well, the thing about defamation is that you actually have to show that it's not true. See, if I can prove it's true and you can't prove any otherwise, it's not defamation. And that's why I've said a lot of the things that I've said. Because I know what I'm looking at. You don't. But it's a pathetic example of defamation complaint on everything because it's the only thing that you've got to effectively hamper, frustrate, manoeuvre and outlast me. Well, I can tell you, all you've done is flan, fan the flames. You've just put fuel to the fire. And in fact, how much fuel could you add? Let me see, as I said, 250,000 per one of these videos that you have made a false, false defamation complaint on. You better be able to prove that the claim that you made to remove these is actually true. Otherwise, 250000 a video, $4 million. Thank you very much. And why don't you delete some more? Because every one of those is going to cost you 250000 We'll just use that as a starting figure, shall we? Now you might think, oh, I can't get that because, you know, when you tried suing Gillian Norman for loss and all of those things, you didn't win that part of it, did you? You didn't win the part that said, I want money for the damage that you've caused to me. Well, it may be a completely different scenario as you would actually understand that 
in what you've done here with 16 of my videos is to actually make deliberate and intentful false claims of defamation that are applied to me. If you do not have a court order against me prior to what you've done, you're up shit's creek without a paddle, buddy. So here, let's take a closer look at those that would frustrate and make false claims of unlawful activities when, Mr. Zillman, you have got absolutely nothing to actually substantiate the claim of defamation. Nothing. What you've put in is either hearsay, unproven by any court order, or you deliberately applied someone else's judgment to me. In full awareness and knowledge, you actually broke the law yourself in attempting to apply someone else's judgment to me. You know I'm not Julia Norman. You know I've got nothing to do with her. That doesn't matter. You will go ahead and use what you can, lawful or unlawful, to silence anyone asking any questions and bringing out any of the discrepancies around your development. So let's take a closer look. Derek Zillman, we've, we will hear Cherie Stokes in the um, boxes when they get into the four-way conversations where Cherie Stokes and Philip Dixon are actually included with Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin. Now, Shrilled Beast, <laughs> sorry, I don't say it how they do, Cherie, Shrilled Beast, I think that's a bit better, but when they get to the Beast, it's a real high-pitched, ear-piercing, want to block your ears because you're a shrill, Shrilled Beast. Shrilled beast! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm only repeating what they call you, girl. Uh, you know, you clearly grate on their nerves and that's why they take you off. But anyway, Cherie Stokes is the girl in the office. She's been there with, um, oh, way before Bulla Bulla with Mark Darwin and Adrian Brennock when they were Truthology and uh, Creator Foundation and Freedom Summits. Now, Adrian Brennock actually got associated with Mark Darwin in either early 2012 or late 2011, and he actually became a partner of Mark Darwin. So everything that they created to do with Advancing Truthology, Creative Foundation, and Freedom Summits was a partnership with Cherie Stokes, the girl in the office. You can always hear them talk about, you know, me or AB or AB, um, Mark and me. And if we can't help you, go to Cherie. This is Cherie. Now, Cherie likes to use a couple of different names, actually. Um, currently, you can find her as Cherie Nightcap, <laughs> original Cherie. But then again, you did name the company of the one that bought the house in Waratah after the address. So you're not really a, an original thinker or very creative, which is why you are the perfect patsy for them. You, as the girl in the office that handle all the documents and everything, that know everything that's going on, well, let's say 90%, because you don't know the other 10% that they talk about you behind your back, do you? But anyway, so you're the one that is actually set up. You see, last time they actually tried to blame Nicole for all their illegal activities, that didn't work. So there's actually now the accusation that was made against Nicole where she stole half the community off the investors. But Nicole acted on the instructions of Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin. So thereby, Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin stole half the community. Cherie Stokes, and Philip Dixon knew exactly what was going on. So did Derek Zillman. Peter Van Lyshout, well, as you can hear in the Voxes, they do everything possible to let, not let him know about the troubles that are going on. And, well, why? Well, you can understand that. Because if he hears about any of the turmoil, if they don't control the narrative around it, 
Peter Van Leishout's going to make up his own mind. They don't want him to make up his own mind based on the facts, so they will get in there and manipulate his opinion with, like Derek Zilman will go up and go, oh, it's all right, Peter, you know, we've got everything under control. Well, no, you haven't, Derek. I seriously don't understand how someone that claims to be a financier would have a business mind to know that you're only throwing good money after bad now. I mean, seriously, what is going on in your head that you can't see that this is financial suicide? But anyway, let's get back to Cherie Stokes here, who is also Cherie Nightcap. Now, Richard Moat also decided he was going to be an original thinker and change his name, last name, to Nightcap as well. No, they are not a couple. They have partners themselves, so no, they're not a couple. They're just really original thinkers. So you can find Rich Mode as Rich Nightcap, and you can find Cherie Stokes as Cherie Nightcap. After the Nightcap on Mingeable Development. Oh, wow, you are so clever, you people. Anyway, so Richard Mode is the sales rep. He has... Uh, quite a few ties in the companies and shareholdings through Mode Investments and all these other ones. He's invested in Mount Burrell Commercial. He's invested in the land. And again, crossover with the superannuation in the land. Oh, naughty, naughty. That's very illegal. And you think that you've done such a good job of keeping them separate off paper. And yet you get our on and you advertise publicly you know, we own the town. Nightcap on Minjimble own the town. Now, the town, the businesses that it's consisted of, have got superannuation in there that consists of members of Nightcap on Minjimble. Now, do you see a little bit of a problem here with your superannuation and your self-managed super funds? Of course they do. I tell you what, Cherie, you will not be smiling when they open up and put you in it because you're the best logical choice to say look she did her job wrong and yes she's also a director she's responsible she's a shareholder she's responsible she did all these things we didn't know that she was doing them in the office and yes we we gave her authority we trusted her and she did this to us just like Nicole took half the community away from the investors, Cherie's done this to the rest of them. And we just can't believe it. So we're just going to go and just, we're going to sue her. We're going to make her take the blame for, for everything that's happened. And you are primed, primed as the patsy, Cherie. Your name is over all the companies you start them off you're in the four-way boxes even saying yes we don't want people to know that you concealed um information from investors you manipulated and lied to investors you aided and abetted adrian brannock and mark darwin derek silman and philip dixon to achieve the outcomes that they were after. And any outcomes that you can't show in direct writing that they told you to do, if it just came over the phone instructions, do this, Cherie, do that. I mean, you're the one that actually tried to sue Nicole, aren't you? So thereby it would seem that you are the one actually trying to blame Nicole for stealing half the community to cover up your own crimes. Do you see your problem, Cherie? I know that you're not the sharpest tool in the shed, which is why they've kept you on. Shrewd a beast! Oh, look, when they get to the part about you and Martin and what they say about your intimate relationships and what it must be like, you know, don't take offence to that because I'm sure you've heard that all before. And the message that AB leaves for Darwin after he's had to endure so many hours in the car with you. <laughs> Dear me, Cherie, you know, you really pissed him off. He had to vent. 
He was so frustrated, you know. And even though he throws in there, oh, you know, I love her, but then he'll turn around and really let it rip. No, the only thing they love about you is that you're the girl in the office that does what they want to, keeps your mouth shut, and you've been able to be easily put in the position to take the blame for everything. Your name's over everything, girl. Everything. And even the, um, uh, what was it, Legal Services Commission. You wrote that letter. You made the complaint. You made the allegations. And you also failed to prove any of them. So that could actually be used against you by AB, Derek Zillman and Philip Dixon if they wanted to, and said that you actually took that action because you were trying to hide up your own actions where you had done it. Which we know that you, Cherie, and Nicole both acted with the instructions of AB and Mark Darwin, Derek Zillman, Philip Dixon. But, yeah, prove it. You see, Cherie, at times when you are sole director and shareholder of a company and you are manoeuvring around funds and manipulating business situations and deals all to do with them, this is something that comes back to you. You're at the root of it all and thereby you are the easiest. And there is years of things now where AB, Derek Zillman and Philip Dixon can all bring, well, I wouldn't say Philip Dixon so much. I think he's probably a little bit running scared now. Uh, aren't you, Philip? Huh? A little bit scared about what's going on because it's all deja vu, except this time it's ten times worse. Oh, well. Shrewd beast. <laughs> Sorry. You know, they had to put the two kind of what you'd call the patsies up the top. Like, Richard Moat has made false representations in the Nightcap on Mingeable official documentary where he said that there is existing approval. Just like Adrian Brannock said there's existing approval. That's a lie. If there was that existing approval, why would they then need to go ahead and lodge DA 21-0010? They've actually shown that their own statements are false by actually lodging a development application to prove when it was lodged that when they said it, it wasn't true. I mean, seriously, you know, Tyler Tolman said that the only reason that he got involved was because he, Derek Zillman, got involved. And seriously, I'd have to wonder what kind of qualifications Derek Zillman's got where... I just can't see anything of what he's doing in continuing with this development where it's actually a wise business decision, where it's even a good financial decision. I mean, if you were a gambler, you'd have million to one odds that this is actually going to succeed. And they're betting on that one in a million odd. And they're telling you on these highly speculative and unachievable outcomes to buy in on land that is still owned, the bulk of it, by Peter Van Lyshout over here. Peter Van Lyshout owns all this land, except for a couple of lots on 3222 Kygel Road and the Mount Burrell commercial area. All the rest of the land is owned, the bulk of Nightcap on Mingimbal is owned by Peter Van Lyshout. It is not owned by NCV Enterprises. And even though they say that there's a contract to buy that, so what? That contract's been in existence and kicked down the road with token payments ever since Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin instigated uh, discussions with Peter Van Lyshout, as you can hear in the Voxes. Peter Van Lyshout is having discussions about setting up and expanding the project of Bulla Bulla. And as it turns out, because all of the investors were worried about, well, where the hell are you spending our money? 
there was over $600,000 that cannot be accounted for. 600000 And on the Voxes, you'll hear about them, uh, Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin, talking about how they move money around to buy things in this land and to buy that land, to put that in there. That 600000 that's missing from investors went to, towards buying Mount Burrell Commercial. But they can't say that and show it linked on paper because of the superannuation thing. But it's stupid because all they've done is constantly advertise the member benefits of owning Mount Burrell Commercial. And Mount Burrell Commercial is topped up with super funds that have got members of Nightcap on Minjimbal. So the land and the business are in conflict. Buy your confessions over and over and over as you try to promote it as a benefit to potential investors. You're confessing that you are illegally using super funds and you knew it. You knew it back in 2016 and every single super fund that you have bought in since then, you have knowingly done illegally with intent. So as I move to um, finalise getting all these um, this evidence together with the criminal charges against all these people, I would ask any legal person out there that would like to take on the challenge of Derek Zillman and his 16 video censorship uh, because if we can win this, we can uh, buy back the community. All right, I'm not into money, <laughs> but um, I'm certainly into um, helping pay for the damage that's been done to the community. And this is the means to do it. They have made unlawful claims against me. I'm not happy about that at all. Not happy. It is offensive and they have besmirched my name. They have continued to make allegations against me that are completely unfounded and true. There is no court order against me. There is no judgment against me and you cannot apply someone else's. If that was the case, nobody would be able to do anything because somewhere there would be a judgment against somebody else that exists that you can't do that because they can't. That is absolutely ridiculous. And this kind of frustration against the free speech of people has to stop. And people need to pay. They need to pay for what they've done. They certainly made others pay for what they have done, so it's time to make them pay. And I know that there are others out there that are looking at defamation claims of their own. Well, let's pull it all together, shall we? Let's go for the whole lot, because it's time that all of these were brought to account for everything that they say. Look, I could say I'm the Queen of England. I flew to Mars last night. Uh, yeah, how true is that? It can just come out of these people's mouths. And this is where Derek Zillman is, one of these silver tongues that they send him in to, oh, look, let's, let's con Peter Van Lysch out and tell him, oh, it's all okay. I've got it all under control. No, you haven't. You've got it far from under control. And the three options that you actually think you have, Derek Zillman, to ignore me, to sue me, or what's the other? Is the other the, uh, you didn't mention it because it's actually not legal, what you're actually doing with my videos? Or is the other more insidious? Well, the more insidious options have certainly been considered by other people that actually pass this on to me what's in your head to do with me. Well, I'm telling you what's in my head to do with you. With you, Cherie Stokes, Richard Moat, Philip Dixon, Peter Van Lyshout. Oh, Tyler Tolman's nothing. So's Pete Evans, so's Max Egan. 
All they are are people that they can con, suck in and use their big database of contact for people so that they can try and flog off sales, get their super, shove it into Mount Burrell Commercial and say, right now you're a member of Nightcap on Minjimble. It's all part of the agreements. Again, you have created, you think you've done such a good job of keeping the land and the commercial separate and all you've done is tie it in at every stage with the promises that you make to people. Not only in your public assertions, but in your private documents that people sign, that I have actually seen them. Yes, I've cited many documents, many you wished I'd never seen. And this quote here about your efforts to engage third-party contractors to assist in the removal of damaging online content affecting both the community's brand and vision. Well, unlawful attacks, prove it. Prove what I've said in these 16 videos is an unlawful attack. Prove they are defamation. Prove it. I dare you. No, you won't take me to court because you're too scared, aren't you? Because you see, you do take me to court. Every single one of my, how many videos? Not just the 16 you removed, but all the others, all of them are going to come out in court. And as I've said before, you might as well sign a confession if you wanted to sue me. On the other hand, me suing you is definitely a viable option and definitely something that unlike me who has nothing to take you do have something to take something that can be taken from you and given back to the community and I would suggest also to the Mount Burrell community and the broader area it's time to start a GoFundMe it is time to take this land and these resources out of the hands of these people and buy back your community. Buy back your heart. Get rid of the vermin that spewed up from hell and you just couldn't get rid of them. It's time to prepare for what's down the road for NCV Enterprises and, what, and M Mount Burrell Commercial. What's down the road for them? Derek Zillman can't see it, he's blinded by something, but what is down the road for them is liquidation. They are propping up investors that are now outweighing the investment value that they could get back from the land. Selling land, shares in land that they don't actually even own. What NCV Enterprises legally owns and has control over and can 100% guarantee that they can offer you a share in that land is very small compared to the thousands of acres that are Peter Van Lyshout's belongs to somebody else. And Peter Van Lyshout was, a few years ago, involved with the joint venture and came in with them. Then when he realised all they were were gunners and it, it was a bad idea, he removed his directorship and he sold his shares out. He didn't want anything to do with them. Then it just became a matter of, here, take my 16 uh, lots, buy them off me. Well, he hasn't even been able to get that done. Because of the 21 lots that they intend to turn into 10 rural land sharing communities and a village, one of those lots is to have Peter Van Lyshout's land around Kemp Cove and Misty Mountains. That will remain intact. There would be no um, reformatting of tidal boundaries on that. So he just gets to keep his and he gets to invite in all those that he wants in his little area. But it certainly wouldn't be that you're a member of the community and you can come wandering over onto his land because that's his land, okay? His land, not NCVs. Then you go next door to Dolph Cook. 
same scenario is going to happen. Dolph Cook actually wants to own that lot himself. He wants to buy out Darko Kovac and Peter Van Lyshout. And again, he will allow certain people around him to buy in those that he allows to. And you'd need Dolph Cook to be able to do that because, you know, if you had a friend show up and you were, let's say that you'd built there next to Dolph and you told a friend, right, go down here and they actually went to Dolph's house instead of yours. They got a little bit lost. So they knocked on his door. The next thing, Dolph's going to come out with a gun in his hand. What are you doing here? You know, seriously, that man up there has got something to hide. When people carry guns and answer the door with them, and when they greet strangers with a gun, well, they shouldn't have the gun for a start because why are you so paranoid? Is there a legitimate reason to be paranoid or do you have a mental health issue? Either way, you know, the, the gun in his hand is a really big red flag. He shouldn't have it in his hand to begin with. And as I've said before, it is quite legal for anyone to approach your front door and knock on it. You then have the right to say, go away. But it is quite legal for them to actually approach you to try and make communications. So when they say that, oh, you know, they've got no legal right to be on your property, uh, au contraire, anyone has the legal right to walk up to your front door. And it certainly ends, you don't have to answer the door, you can tell them, just leave, whatever. But up until that point, they have the right to walk up and knock on your door. And yes, that includes private land. So you've got an unstable person like Dolph Cook or someone that's conducting in activities that is highly, well, making him very paranoid that he needs to carry a gun to protect it. From what? From who? Why? Yes, there are a lot of issues going on at NICAP on Minjimbal. And some of the big issues are that, well, Peter Van Lyshout that he's in a, a partnership to own the land with Dolph Cook, but he doesn't even like Dolph Cook. He can't stand him. In fact, most people can't because, well, he carries a gun and he's completely unstable. And if you actually look at the videos from the Cannabis University, it's like, wow, Dolph should never open his mouth. He should let that other guy, John, speak. Because the second that Dolph opens his mouth, it's like, really? I mean, seriously, kids that have just started to learn to speak actually show that they've got more going on in the brain than what you have. I mean, hello, knock, knock, no one home. And this Dolph Cook is now giving out medical advice and medical treatments to palliative care and cancer patients without a license to do so. He's practicing medicine without a license. And that's just so scary that he doesn't, he's the kind of person that, well, I don't know, has he had such a long history of drugs and alcohol uh, that it's just killed all his brain cells off that now they can't make connections to form coherent sentences and thoughts. I don't know. But the fact that he is actually giving medical advice and he's giving medical treatments and all of these other things that are associated with terminally ill and scared people, it is nothing more than a faith healer in a lot of respects. You know where you have those churches things that where people come in and they they pay all their money and oh no I'm healed now you know snake oil faith healers now there are medical benefits for sure that are to do with the cannabis product but Dolph Cook does not have a license to grow medical grade cannabis he does not have a license in any way shape or form to give any medical advice or to 
to sell any medical products that are associated which actually you need a doctor's prescription pad and that doctor needs to ring up and get an authority number that goes on the prescription pad and then you can go and get it filled. Dolph Cook doesn't have any of that. Now I'm wondering if that would be classified as an unlawful attack on Nightcap on Minjimbal to state that someone with an industrial license that clearly looks like that they have got mental health issues in some way, shape or form is claiming to be medical, medical, giving medical advice. Is that unlawful? To give medical advice without a license? And you can thank Dolph's new wife. <laughs> See, Dolph is the Dean of Green and his wife, well, whether they got married or not, or they just call her that, she's the mother of Mary Jane. And these are the two people, the Dean of Green and the mother of Mary Jane, who are the medical practice, the medical advice, and the distributors of medical aids that they're not actually legally qualified to use or do. How do you answer that one, Mr. Zillman? Would you like to show us Dolph Cook's medical license? Would you like to show us all of these things that give him the ability to do what he's doing up there at the Cannabis University? And we know what he's doing because he puts it on video. And he's also set up a nice little um, shop in um, Mwilumba too. <laughs> cannabis University and that Cannabis University would also be one of the foundation types that was formed by Mark Darwin I dare say because um, Foundation Association and the other one that they like to use is to wrap it up around some type of educational facility where you can then charge people um, to learn things but it's not so much charging them as you need to make a donation and thereby they're not earning any oh it, look it's all the foundation crap in creative foundation that actually came undone for adrian brennock and mark darwin and you can hear that in the 2016 voxes where they are being pursued and they are made to take down every single video if they don't they're going to jail on their how to create these foundations, non-government organisations, and basically tax evasion. And they ended up with a big tax bill. So the Cannabis University, as long as it continues to operate under the foundation that was set up by Mark Darwin, is going to be illegal, it's going to be tax evasion, and you're going to end up with a t big tax bill. So you've got something to look forward to, Dolph Cook, haven't you? Because Cannabis University, you're not even qualified to even give out any botanical information. I've got more qualifications than you, mate. I've actually got those qualifications. And I even got a few from the uni last, or well, about three years ago. So yes, I've got more qualifications than you to set up a university and teach others you're not even teaching others. That guy John was. But anyway, I think I've covered enough of their flaws for today. And uh, I'll finish it off with, yes, if you've got any, anyone out there that would like to take on this cause of these 16 censored videos, I think that we could actually have some success with this. And we could also have a su successful outcome that would actually aid to repair a lot of the damage that NCV Enterprises and Nightcap on Minjimble and Bulla Bulla or whatever bloody other name that they want to hide their crap under, you know, make them pay for what they've done. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> I'll catch you next time. Bye.